Hi, this is Raheem Zilfekar Ali. So, in the very first video of uh, Microsoft Power Query, we will be looking at that what is Power Query and how it can be used in Microsoft Power BI application. So, basically, Microsoft Power Query is used to transform and clean the data and to make it automate. So, it's simply an ETL tool. So, what is ETL? ETL is Extract, Transform and Load. It's a basically a methodology where you when you get a data from a data source so you have to do certain changes to the data before doing some analytics or creating a dashboard so for this purpose Microsoft in the Microsoft Power BI we have already a built-in tool uh, which does the ETL work which transform the data clean the data and automate the data and then we can load that data after cleaning into our data model where we can create some star schemas or snowflake schema and then further we can do or apply DAX and create awesome dashboards in Power BI. So to learn this tool, this specifically Power Query, we should know the fundamentals and in this particular course you will go through each and every individual topic where you can create your skill sets in transforming and cleaning up the data with the help of Power Query. The good thing is that Microsoft Power Query is also and what is Power Query with this basic and formal definition by the Microsoft. So Power Query is a data transformation and data preparation engine. Power Query comes with a graphical interface for getting data from sources and a Power Query editor for applying the transformations. So for from this short definition it's very clear that whatever you want to perform with the data either it's related to the transformation or preparation of data before getting into the data model you have to use power query now where the power query lies so basically if you are getting the data uh, in terms of excel file into the power bi or you are getting the data from cloud or sql server uh, before making a dashboard you have to go uh, check that if your data is not up to the mark or up to the standard you have to pass it through the power query and then you can load it either in microsoft excel as i told you very first time when you open microsoft power bi this is uh, the latest version of microsoft power bi which is uh, may 2022 so to check the version you you can just click on help tab and click on about so it will open a window where you can see that it's a 64 bit version uh, and it's the latest version which i am using may 2022 okay now let let first uh, import the data from an excel file and then we will go to the power query editor where you can see that how this tool look like so i will click on get data and i will import the data from an excel workbook all right so i will use this course file which is one power query etl and i have already put a file in pq1 what is power query a sample data set so i will open this sample data set to just make you understand that when to use the power query so first it will read the data it will connect the data and now power bi shows me a navigator window where i have a choice to import a data from either table or a sheet so i will prefer table so i will just check mark uh, now directly going to the power query editor you can just click on transform data it will let you to enter in the power query editor uh, mode okay or if you click on load the the data will load first and after loading the data then if you later on want to go to the power query uh, so you have a feature or a button called transformation data in the home tab you have the transformation data click on that it will similarly same method it will make you to go enter in power query editor so let's click on transform data and it will open a new window in just next few seconds so now this is basically the power query editor where you do all the transformations regarding the data set okay now for example if you if, if i do any action so these are all the features which we will be discussing uh, majority of the features we will be discussing in this course and with the passage of time um, on a monthly basis i will be adding new videos so that uh, you can have more knowledge uh, with this tool so these are all the features where the microsoft vision is to provide all those tools to the business user where you are required to do less coding or no coding concept okay so we have these features available and whatever the transformation steps you apply 
So for example, if I want to remove the column, I have just right click and click on remove. So all the steps will be recorded on the right side. This is a query settings window where any of the step which you applied from these features will be recorded here. Now the most important part to understand in this first video is that Power Query also contain, contains a, a language in, in, in itself. Okay, uh, Just like if you use Microsoft Excel, you uh, build formula you you build formulas or apply the functions uh, to get the results out of the data right in so this is the uh, advanced editor where you can see i have just used the uh, user interface but on the back end the language is being generated right so this is power query and remember that uh, if later on if you do some coding in the power query to clean the data and or to transform the data so you are required to write the M language code uh, in the advanced editor. So you, you have to write all the codes you are going to run that. But this, this, this particular language is case sensitive language. So if you're writing a code in small letters, it, it would might not work here. Or you are writing the codes here in uh, alpha, capital alphabets, it will not work here. It's a case sensitive language. Okay. So this is all about the environment and what is Power Query and there are a lot of amazing features available and in this particular course you will learn many different topics that how to use Power Query and make your all the data transformation automate. Thank you. Hi this is Raheem Zulfikar Ali. In this video we will learn about what are the data types available in Microsoft Power Query within Power BI. So if you can see, we have a data which has four columns, products, salesperson, order date, and then sales. And every column represent a certain type of data. For example, salesperson represent a textual type of data where we have all the names. If we compare this with order dates, it contains dates and dates are the numbers of the backend. So they are on the right side. Similarly, the column of sales USD contains a number. So for example, if you have a data set and it is not properly correct, uh, having a correct data type, so you can change that particular column data type by just clicking on a small icon which is available on each header left side. So when you click, a contextual menu will open where you can find a lot of different formats are available. So there are for the numbers we have decimal number settings, fixed decimal number, whole number and the percentages. Similarly related to the time period we have date and time formats and for the text as well. We have true and false, boolean values formats are also available and also the locale settings. This locale settings is also covered in a separate video. Right. So I hope you learn that how to correct the data type format in Microsoft Power BI. Thank you. Hi, this is Raheem Zulfika Ali. So in this video, we will learn that how to correct the dates and use the locale settings. So let's get started. So I will go to get data and I will click on Excel workbook. So we have this topic, which is PQ3 fixing dates and date locale settings. So in this folder, we have a file and that is CSV file. So for that, we will choose here all files. Now we can see that CSV file has been appeared, locale settings date. So I will click on open and it will take few seconds to read at the backend. So now you can see locale date settings, a window. And this is because a CSV file, so it has a different kind of preview. Uh, we have uh, four top rows which are not relevant so we will remove top four rows from this data set and we will make this fifth row as our headers because as you can see that the headers are coming like column one two three four five which is not relevant and we also don't want column four and five because these are blank as well also if you can observe that the dates are not in the correct format because in the us standard uh, we generally use the slash date format which are uh, month at the beginning, day at the center and year at the last but here is a vice versa. This kind of issues occurs when you have uh, a different regional locale uh, files 
uh, when you receive that and you do uh, date formatting for that so these kind of issues occurs uh, some of the multinational companies which are working in asian countries as well as in the european or other regional countries they have a, they have different kind of dates format sets so you will find this particular thing uh, even, even in that kind of scenario so let's uh, click on the transform data to get into the power query editor directly and it will open a new window so this is the power query editor so first uh, we will remove top four rows for doing that uh, in the home tab you can see remove rows options and i will click on remove top rows from this menu so a small window is now pop up and uh, how many number of rows we want to remove so we will write a number here that is four and click on ok so all those rows are removed we don't need column four and five so we will select column four first and then press the control key and left mouse key right click and in this contextual menu click on remove columns now we want to uh, make this first row of our data set as a column headers so we have that feature available in the home tab you can see used first row as headers so i will just click on that and my first row become as a header the next thing is that we want to correct the date format so if primarily you are using either you are using microsoft excel or even power bi you know that whenever a user enters a date in a cell it goes to the right side it's always a right alignment of the date but here all the dates are coming on the left side which are which is not the correct format so as a power query user uh, we have a different data types available we can set different data types for each of the column and uh, each of the data type uh, you can see uh, in on every column header on the left side you will see a small icon sometimes a small abc icon or sometimes a small one two three icon this is a, a format which, which which we can set for every kind of a column so i will click on this small button and you can see a contextual menu here which we where we have a different kind of uh, formats available for each of the column so here what we are required to do is for example if you want to correct the date format and if i just click on the date here and i will press the replace current so it will give me an error because it's an issue for the locale setting so i will again undo this step i will go to this applied steps area and i will just click on this cross icon so that i can remove the previous step now what i am required to do is i will just click again on this small icon and i will go to using locale and this will pop up a window here change the type with locale and in the data type i will select the date so from this uh, menu i will go to english pakistan and uh, here it is okay so i have selected in the date type date and locale english pakistan and i will press ok so now you can see that our date formats are properly are coming and uh, this is how we can change the locale settings and correct the date format as with respect to our country okay once you have corrected all the uh, steps for the regarding the data transformation you know that uh, power query uh, generates the m language on the back end so you can see that in the advanced editor so this is the window where you can see the m language code right so once you are done with the transformation you can just click on close and apply and it will ready in the power bi thank you hi this is raheem tulfik ali so in this video we will learn that how to move remove rename and make a duplicate column in power query so for this i am using pq4 and we have a file here so i will click on open and it will read the file so we will select the table here remember that whenever you have a choice between selecting a sheet or a table the user should give a preference to select a table instead of a sheet because it might contain unnecessary columns to be come in uh, we just want to have a data from table okay so in this particular workbook we have a table and the name of the table is hr database so we will click on transform data to go into the power query editor directly all right so now we can see the data and uh, we will do uh, an experience that how to move a column from one place to another how to rename a column delete a column and to make a duplicate column so for example if i 
want to move this category column after the grid so I will hold my mouse left key and I will just drag slowly and drop here so that this column should move here okay and whatever the steps you are doing are being recorded here okay so this was how to move the column okay now next thing is that how to rename a column for example instead of function I want to write departments so I will just double click this header so I have just double click the header and now I can type the name which is department and I will press the enter key so now my column has been renamed how to delete a column simply right click and in this contextual menu you will find remove okay so this will remove the column also what you can do is if you just want first and second column and you don't want the other columns so what you can do a shortcut is select the first column and the second column which you want to stay right click and use this feature that is remove other columns so it will remove other columns okay you can also remove columns by the here as well the next thing is that how to make a duplicate column so right click on any column and from this contextual menu you will find an option duplicate column so you'll have a duplicate copy and you can just rename again and that as well okay so in this video we will learn we have learned that uh, how to move the column rename column delete the column and make a duplicate copy of any column thank you hi this is Raheem Zulfikar Ali so in this video we will learn how to split columns and we have two examples so we will be following PQ5 split columns workbook so we have two examples here first I will use parse URLs example and then we will use separating text fields so let us open this workbook alright so from the navigator window as I told you that the strategy is to select the table if we have a table from the workbook so we import this table which contains uh, one website URL which has a lot of URLs in that particular website uh, categories and subcategories so we will transform that data and we will extract the categories and subcategories names and we will delete the irrelevant information so the purpose of to clean here is that if you can see uh, you will find uh, there is a common category is available here of food and color every time so we want food and color which is the main category in a separate column and the and after that there is a subcategory for each of the hyperlink so we want that in a separate column and we don't want this uh, URL as well so we will delete that column after splitting so how to split based on a delimiter now what is delimiter delimiter is a common character which is available and we make that delimiter as a base to split our data so in this particular example our common point or a delimiter is slash so I will right click on this column and from this contextual menu I will go to split column and I will use by delimiter option okay okay so from this window we have to do certain changes so here we have some common delimiters available but not a slash which we want so we will select custom here and in the custom we will type that delimiter our subcategories again for the main categories we will do the same thing for this particular column right click split, split column by delimiter and we will write slash here right most delimiter and it will split that as well now we don't want this first column so we will remove this column and also we don't want this URLs which are coming again so I will open this filter menu and I will just uncheck this option and I will press OK this means that we have excluded that particular thing we can also rename the headers as well just double click on it and we can say that this is the category and then we have subcategories so we have just transformed our data and we have used the split column techniques subcategory and after that if you want to load that you can load by clicking on close and apply and if you want to rename the table name so you can just right click and rename that as well split columns okay. so let me click on close and apply now it will load the data here 
and then we will move towards the one more example of splitting the columns so it will take some few seconds to read the data and uh, load to the data model all right so 58 rows has been successfully loaded so for next example let's go to get data from excel workbook now we will use separating text fields for excel workbook so i will click on open and here i will select table 1 okay and what we will do is we have uh, uh, information in just one column we want to split this information into three different columns so we have got item numbers on the left side item names at the middle and sku sizes on the right side so let's transform this data so i will click on transform data it will open a power query editor window again so now we want to split it based on item number item name and item size okay so right click and we will go to split by delimiter again and in this particular example the delimiter is a space so we will say that a split so we have selected a space here and we will say that split based on leftmost delimiter so space which is available at the at the leftmost side will make sure that all the item numbers will get splitted so i will press ok so as now you can see that all the item numbers has been splitted now we will again select this column right click and go to split column by delimiter and this time we will have same delimiter which is a space and we will select rightmost delimiter so skus will get splitted right so this is how we have successfully splitted uh, information into three different columns as required by us okay thank you hi this is raheem zulfikar ali so in this video we will learn how to merge in power query so let's get start we will use pq6 merge and we have one excel workbook that is merge in power query so let's open this So here you can see that in this particular Excel workbook, you have two sheets, actual and budget. And in these two sheets, we have two tables, actual one table, which is in the actual sheet and budget two table, which is in budget sheet. So the priority for the user should be to bring the tables instead of sheets. So I will check mark on actual one and budget two tables. And let's go to the transform data to merge these two tables and get the desired outcome. So I will click on transform data. Now what we are required to do is, as you can see here in the actual table, we have four columns, month, category, product, and actual sales. And we have another table, which is of budget. Again, we have four columns in that budget table as well, month, category, product, and budgeted sales this time. So in actual, we have actual sales and in a budget, we have the budgeted sales, budgeted sales for each of the month, category, and product all together. So how are we gonna do that? You can assume that if you have used Excel, so you can assume that you are doing a kind of a lookup. But here, what we're going to but here, uh, the best part from the Microsoft is that uh, we don't write to write anything or any kind of SQL code here. We just need to select the right kind of a join and Power Query will do that for us. So let's get begin. Uh, I will go to the home tab here and here you can see a feature or a button that is called merge queries. So we will select merge queries as new so that a new table could be made and we can combine actual and budget together. So now on the first on the top side we have the actual one table already selected and here we will select budget 2. Remember that the table which is on top selected is, is the left side and the downwards is the right side and we need to select a right kind of a join so by default in this particular video we are going with the left outer join left outer join means that all the fields which are available in the actual table will get match itself in the budgeted table and if it, if it matches it will fetch the budgeted sales numbers in the new table okay so it says that all from the first matching from the second right 
But before that, we have to also select the criteria that how gonna actual table will match itself in the budget table. So for doing that, because we know that the month column has some duplicates, the category has duplicates and product has also some might be duplicate. So uh, if you know the Excel in Excel, if you use the VLOOKUP or index match, uh, it, it also does not handle the duplicate scenario where it just return the first occurrence. So to overcome with that limitation in Power Query, what we do is we will select these three columns first, month, category and product. And you can observe that when I just selected these three columns by pressing the control and left mouse key, a small number has been written on the right side of each of the title. This means that my selection sequence and I have to follow this particular sequence right straight away in the budget table as well. I, I can't do that I select product first here and then category in the middle or month at the last. I need to make sure that the sequence which I have selected, the columns which I have selected in the actual table should remain same in the budget table. So once I have selected these three columns uh, and I am doing the left outer join. So what it will do is it will basically transaction by transaction matches from this actual table and find out that if they, these are available in the budgeted table and if available, so we will get our desired actual and sales numbers, budget sales numbers. So now I will press OK and before pressing OK, you can see that it says that the selection matches 857 of 858 rows from the first table. So this means might be possible that we have don't made one budget which are present in the actual table. Okay, so let's press OK. And let's see what it comes. Okay, so now we have a new table which is of merge one. Uh, we can just rename that table as uh, consolidated or anything, any word you would like to give. Consolidated, okay. And uh, you can see here we have the month column, category, product, actual sales is available. Now we want the budgeted sales in this column. So you can see that a table, table, table is written here. We want just budget numbers from the budget table. So on top right side, you can see a, a small icon which has two arrows left and right side. I will just click on this option and I will only select the budget sales which I need to bring from the budget table. And I will uncheck this feature that is use original column name as prefix and I will press OK now. See how easy it is instead of doing some kind of complex VLOOKUPs or index match in Excel. What you can do is you can uh, just merge two different tables and get your desired outcome based on kind of a join which you select. So we, we got that on the first January 2015 in the categories of beverages. The product is chai. We have the actual number as well as we have the budgeted numbers. Once you have done this, you can just click on close and apply and the data get ready in the Power BI to do further analytics. Thank you. Hi, this is Raheem Zulfikar Ali. In this video, we will learn how to filter the raws or unnecessary data which we don't want to put in our Power BI. So I have opened a file and imported which is available in this particular video folder uh, related to the HR data set. And let's say this is the data set and we have not loaded yet into the Power BI. We have just imported the data set and click on transform data to get into the Power Query editor. Now for example, uh, before loading the final data set into the Power BI, uh, in the Power Query here, we don't want, or let's suppose if I exclude one function or a business department from this particular column. So for example, we don't want operations to be added. So I will open this filter menu, just like you do this kind of things in Microsoft Excel filter menus. So if I just uncheck the operations and if I press OK, so now operations is not visible here. Now this doesn't mean that it is being uh, hidden. It's a kind of a hidden, but when I will load this, when I click on close and apply and this data will load into the Power BI interface, I will not see the operations there. So it, it a kind of an excluded data. Um, when you filter anything from these columns menus, when you uncheck anything, either it's a textual value or a number value, and you press OK, this means that once you load the data in the Power BI, that particular field will not be available there. Okay. And if, if you later on you want to include, again, you have to come back to the Power 
query and check mark so that it should be included in the data set to use in further dashboard analytics right so here this filtering option means that it is temporarily hidden and also excluded when we uh, take this uh, data model when we take this data file to the power bi interface okay so this is the concept of filtering Hi, this is Raheem Zulfikar Ali. In this particular video, we will learn that how to remove duplicates and errors in Microsoft Power BI. So first we will import the data. So get data from Excel workbook, removing duplicates and errors file, click on open. Select the table one and click on transform data to go directly in the Power BI. All right, so first here with uh, after reading the data, we will do some corrections and we can observe something uh, unnecessary things available in our data. So we will clean that. Uh, first, we have the order ID column in which you can see the order ID based on numbers. But in one entry, we have the spelling, which is Belgium. And this entire row is null. So we don't want this record here. So what we can do is open the filter and we can just exclude the Belgium from this filtering menu. But what if, if the data is too large and there are a lot of spellings or any other mess up data, so it will take a lot of time to exclude from this filtering option, right? So the best way is to uh, basically remove these kind of uh, errors or, or you can say these kind of messy data. Uh, first, we will select the order ID column and if you can see that order ID should be have a data type format of uh, whole number okay uh, so we will as soon as we correct this data type format the belgium has converted into an error now if i open this filter menu the error is not shown here so how to delete this entire raw very simple we will click on remove raws and here we have that feature available remove errors and it will entirely that draw is entirely removed right the next thing is how to remove duplicates. So for example, if you can observe in the order ID, we have five transactions, whereas the transaction third and fourth is exactly same. So you can compare this entire record, okay, which is same. So if I uh, go to remove rows and if I say remove duplicates, so that duplicate row has been removed. But let me undo this step and tell you one more thing. If I select order ID and if I also select the shipping country by holding the control key and left key and then I go to remove rows and when I click on remove duplicates, it's now not removing the duplicates because as I told you in earlier videos that Power Query is a case sensitive tool. Uh, the M language is written here is also case sensitive and most of the time it reads the case sensitive parts. So as you can see this entry is particularly duplicate but in the shipping country the spelling of france is uh, basically one is a case sensitive and another is in a small letter so it's still it's recognizing its case sensitivity and it's not removing it so if i still want to remove it then just select the order id and remove duplicates the next thing is that if you can see in the freight column where all the amounts are written but in one cell it's an error by default okay so we want to replace the error so i will select this column I will go to transform and in the replace value drop down menu I will select replace errors and I will put a number here which will be zero so instead of zero instead of errors it will show a zero and now the format is being correct so all the steps which I was applying on this interface has are been recorded here right now I will go to the home tab and close and apply and my data is ready to make a report or a dashboard out of it thank you Hi, this is Raheem Zulfikar Ali from Excel Basement. In this video, we will learn about how to do sorting in Microsoft Power BI within Power Query tool. So let's get start. This is a, a new file. So we will click on get data and then we will select the data source. Uh, we want to bring the data from Excel workbook. So I will click on Excel workbook 
and uh, I will open pq9 that is for sorting and I will import this file that is sorting.xlsx so I will open this file it will take few seconds to read and load and uh, now you can see that a navigator dialog window has appeared so what we are required to import in, in Power BI uh, if, do you want to get the table or you want to get the sheet so the preference is to get the table uh, and you can see the preview on the right side we have some multiple columns so simply um, if you want to go directly to the power query window uh, you can click on transform data button or you can click on load button once the data is loaded and then you can move to the power query so we'll cl click on transform data and if it will open up a new window that is the power query editor right so now you can sort the data within the power query and we will also discuss uh, what happens when we do multi sorting on different columns so for example if i want to sort this products column so i will uh, click on this arrow which is the drop down menu and i can select ascending or descending sorting right so for example if i click on ascending so you know that ascending starts from a to z so the bottles has been coming on top right and then i want to sort also the next column that is salesperson column so i will open this drop down menu which is a small arrow on the right side of uh, the header and again i will click on for example this column i need to sort in descending order so i will click on descending so salim is being on top uh, in the bottles product right one more thing you can observe is that now you have applied sorting on two columns first on a product and then on a salesperson column right and you can observe that that is there is a small number has been automatically generated on just this drop down before this drop down menu arrow button a small one and you can see a salesperson here small two this means the level of sorting here for example i also want to sort the region column as well from descending so I will open this menu again and I will click on descending so now you can see that uh, there is a small number has been written which is 3 these number indicates the level of sorting which we have done in our data set okay so whenever we do multi-level sorting uh, power query observes and write the sequence of these uh, sorting as well uh, which we generally don't observe in Microsoft Excel until we go to uh, drill down that particular sorting area uh, but in Power Query you know that these numbers indicate the level of sorting which we have done in uh, Power Query once you are done with the sorting you can just click on close and apply to load the data in the Power BI thank you hi this is Raheem Zulfikar Ali from Excel Basement in this video we will learn that how to append the data from multiple excel worksheets uh, into one so let's get start i have opened an excel file in microsoft excel just to give you an idea first that how our data looks like in multiple excel worksheets and then we will perform uh, this particular appending technique in microsoft power bi within the power query tool so let's discuss the data first so this is the excel file uh, called append multiple worksheets and we have uh, five sheets at the bottom you can see so these are monthly basis uh, worksheets from jan to may so if you can see this uh, january data we have five columns so there are uh, approximately total 100 stores and we have quarterly sales so q1 q2 q3 and then q4 so total we have five columns okay if you go to the february sheet uh, again in the month of february we have 100 stores that's the store id then we have four quarter sales but this time you can see one change as compared to the previous sheet that is for the january uh, in the february we have q4 at the first and then the last column is for the q3 now i have done this intentionally because I want to show you that if you have uh, not a proper arrangement of the column sequence in multiple sheets even then Power Query is very smart to handle uh, to append the data and to uh, combine all the data uh, very efficiently without having the trouble of 
uh, moving columns here and there manually okay so i have intentionally put q4 first and then q3 then in the march in april it's similar with the pattern numbers are changed and in the month of may i have also added one more column that is for the total so we have store wise total for all the quarters now you can observe that this total column is not available in the other sheets like january february march and april right but it's uh, coming in only in the month of may so what happens if we don't have the same pattern if we have this kind of a thing that we have some extra columns in other sheets and we have we don't have a uh, much sequence pattern uh, what happens when we append uh, the data uh, together in power query so power query also smartly handles this kind of a situation as well and i will give you a demonstration as well okay uh, but remember that uh, the power query is a case sensitive language one thing you need to make sure that all the headers which you see on different sheets should be have same spelling and also case sensitivity issue as well so for example if i have written q3 q is capital but in february sheet if i write in a small it will make a trouble to append the data from multiple sheets in power query so power query understands when you have the headers or the titles uh, with the same spelling in all the sheets okay and also need to consider the case sensitive issue as well right uh, it doesn't matter you have some extra columns in other sheets and don't have the extra columns in in other sheets it doesn't matter doesn't matter if you ha don't have a uh, sequence wise columns in all sheets it will handle automatically right so every sheet has 100 stores so this means that this is a total data of 500 rows and i will give you uh, that number when we append the data in power bi within power query tool so i hope you understood the data how uh, this excel file looks like with multiple sheets having some issues as well uh, regarding the extra columns in a sequence but we will be able to append the data successfully in uh, power query now you can imagine that if you are an excel user and you want to append the data all together in one sheet uh, from multiple excel sheets you need to run vba codes or you need to copy and paste it manually which takes a lot of time but in power query within the excel or if you use power query within the power bi uh, it's just a matter of seconds and it it's handled smartly so let's get start i will uh, let me just uh, close this uh, excel file here we are in the power bi i will click on get data so i will select the excel workbook here and i will go to my folder that is pq10 appending data from multiple excel worksheets and i will select this workbook so it will take few seconds to load and uh, a navigator window will open right so we have the five sheets and we will check mark all the sheets we need to uh, bring data from all these five excel sheets and i will click on transform data to open up power query editor so it will take few seconds to open the power query editor okay so now you can see the power query editor here and what we trying to do is we are trying to append all these different sheets data into one so um, on the home tab you have the append queries just click on this small arrow you will have two options the first one is append query if you go with this particular selection what happens is all the other sheets data will merge in the march because we are actively on march so we don't want to append the data in this current position we want to append queries as new and i will click on this so we have more than two tables so we will click on three or more tables march is already there because we will act we are, we are actively on the march uh, sheet that's why march is already being selected so we need to just uh, add the other month sheets so we have april fab gen and may so i have added so this is tables to append we need to append this uh, data from these five sheets so i have selected here and click on ok and that's it so now you can see that we have store id column q1 q2 q3 q4 and then total column now total column is coming as a null but i when i scroll down you will see that the numbers are coming now because you saw that only the total column was in 
the month of May, if you can see here. So when, when we have appended the data, uh, because other sheets does not contain the total column, right? So in the appending, in the final output, there is a null because it's there, there was no total column in the other sheets. But when you scroll down and you come to the May data, it will show you the numbers, right? One more thing we observed that uh, in the February data, Q4 uh, was the fourth column and Q3 is the fifth column. So we have changed the positioning. So for example, if I want to verify that store one in the month of February within Q3 is 74. And if I go to my append one data, and if I scroll down to uh, a little bit, after 100 store, we have, uh, okay, so after 100 store, we have again store one, which is uh, basically the February data, right? And you can see that in the Q3 column, we have this that 74. So that's how smartly Power Query is, that uh, if the sequence of the columns are not there, set in the different sheets, it automatically fetches according to the column and it recognizes uh, according to the column headers. So you don't need to worry about that. But imagine if you are doing this kind of things in Excel, uh, you need to take care about everything which uh, comes uh, differently uh, with the help of formulas or VBAs or manual, right? But in Power BI, the Power, Power Query handles it very smartly, okay? So this is a small technique. You can just rename this as well. So just right click, click on rename and you can give it a name as consolidate appended data with or consolidated data appended data once you are done you can just click on close and apply it will uh, move to the power bi and then you can start creating your dashboards or reports what whatever you like okay thank you hi this is raheem zulfikar ali from excel basement in this video, we will learn that how we can append the data from multiple Excel workbooks when we have the same table names. So that's the assumption which we will carry in this entire video. Okay. So I have a folder and in this particular folder, I have four Excel files. You can see that January, February, March and April. So all these different Excel workbooks contain some data inside it. So I have opened this four Excel workbooks in Microsoft Excel just to give you first a demonstration that how the data looks like. So each of the file has four columns. It could be more than four columns, doesn't matter. Uh, so in this particular file of January, we have four columns and this particular data has been converted into a table format. And once you convert the normal data into a table format, it's converted into structural references where you can uh, edit this table properties as well. And every uh, structured data, uh, you can say that every table has, uh, has its certain name. So in the table design ribbon, you can see uh, the table name which is defined as a data. Okay. And if I go to, for example, in the April workbook, we have uh, the data here for the month of April and this is also converted into a table format and the name is same for that this table as well this is called data so I have four Excel workbooks and each of the workbook contains a data which is in a table format and the name of every table is same okay so this is the assumption which we will carry and append the data all together from different Excel workbooks into the Power BI okay so I hope you understood the data okay that each of the excel workbook has a table format data and, and the name of the table is same okay. power bi now i will click on get data and i will not click on excel workbook we know that we need to bring the data from excel workbooks but there are more than one excel workbooks so we need to basically select the common data source which is the folder okay so we will click on more here and it will open up a new window in okay from here we will select the folder and click on connect and paste the folder path or you can just click on browse button and locate that folder click on ok okay so now it's showing you a, a kind of a metadata a summarized information that what that particular uh, folder contains so there are four excel files 
uh, Jan, Feb, March, April. These are Excel files when they were created, when they were modified and some of the information. Uh, what we are required to do is we need to combine and load the data. Okay, if you want to do certain changes before you need to load the data, you can go with the first option that is combine and transform data, which lets you to the Power Query editor. But we are sure that uh, all the Excel workbooks contain similar kind of columns and we just want to grab all the data from different workbooks all together uh, and we want to combine them. Uh, be, remember that based on a condition which we discussed earlier that all these Excel workbooks contains data that are converted into a table format and the name of the table in every Excel workbook is same. Okay. But it might came in your mind that what if that table names are not similar. So you will learn that in PQ12 video. Uh, but here we have all things are structured. So we will click on combine and load. So it will take few seconds to read the data and evaluate the query on the back end. And uh, within few seconds, it will give us the output and we can cross check as well. You can see that there is a combined files uh, dialog window here. Uh, in the sample file, you have a drop down menu where you can see that you are bringing up four Excel workbooks. Now, for example, in this particular situation, we have the same pattern in each of the Excel workbook, right? But for example, in the month, uh, in, in the February file, you have six columns. In the Jan file, you have just four columns. So you need to select here uh, the base file uh, which you need to drive or you need to give the command to the power query to follow the pattern of that particular file okay now because here in all these four files we have similar kind of columns inside them so whatever the file you will select it will follow that particular pattern to append the data accordingly okay but if if there is a file which contains some extra columns, you need to make them as a base file. You have to select that file uh, in, in the sample file area. Okay. Now, one thing uh, we are sure that each of the Excel workbook contains a sheet and a table. And what we are trying to do is we need to basically fetch all the data from different Excel workbooks and that table name is similar. So you can see that data is being written here and this is a small icon of a table. So whatever file you select here, because the pattern is same in all the Excel workbooks, you just need to click on data because we need to bring all the data from a table, not from the sheets. Okay. And, and that is very similar. Whatever the file you select from the top, you can see the data as a table name, right? So we need to click on data and click OK. And it will run on a backend. And within next few seconds, it will combine all the data from different Excel workbooks into one. So now you can imagine if you are an Excel user, uh, if you are a, a traditional Excel user, you need to again run VBA codes or uh, something complex. Uh, but if you are a modern Excel user, you can use Power Query in Excel or you can use uh, Power BI within that. We have the Power Query tool available, which appends the data from different Excel workbooks together uh, within few seconds. Okay, so now we have, we, we got the data here. And if I go to the data tab, so we can see the preview of the data from here. Okay, so we, uh, if I open this drop down menu, uh, we can see that we have uh, data all together coming from the four files Jan, Feb, March, April. You can see the month name here, right? Uh, the best part of this particular technique is that, for example, in the next month, um, we, we, have, we have just four months right here. Uh, if I make a copy of another, for example, workbook and if I rename that as uh, May. So for example, if a user fetches or exports some of the data uh, from a software and then that user puts that next month file into this particular folder. Uh, here we are taking the example of for the month of May. So for example, if I go to the Power BI, I don't need to run all those steps which I 
updated for the appending i just need to uh, go to home tab and click on refresh and now see the magic what happens is here we got our data for the month of may automatically appended in the power bi so that's the beauty this means that every month when the user will put a new file into this folder and we just need to click on refresh button in the power bi the data will get appended automatically right and imagine that from this particular data set when you create some dashboards all those visuals or slicers will get updated automatically as well right thank you Hi, this is Raheem Zulfakarali from Excel Basement. In this video, we will learn how to append data from multiple Excel workbooks and each of the Excel workbook contains sheets and the name of the sheets are same. So this is the assumption which we will carry in this video. In the previous video, PQ11, we carry an assumption where we have same table names. In this video, PQ11.1, .1, we are carrying a new different assumption that we have multiple Excel workbooks and we need to fetch the data from different workbooks where we have all sheet names are same. So first let me show you a demonstration by opening all those Excel files in Microsoft Excel application and then we will append the data in the Power BI. Okay so I have a folder and in this particular folder we have four Excel workbooks as you can see East, North, South and West and I have opened them into the Microsoft Excel application. So in the north file, there are five columns, store ID, Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4. And you can see at the bottom, the name of this particular sheet is called data. When I go to the next Excel workbook, which is of south, now you can see the similar thing that this particular workbook also contains a sheet and the name is same this worksheet name is called data then i move to another excel workbook which is of east and here we have again some kind of a data and the name of this particular sheet is the data okay so the assumption which we will carry for appending the data from multiple excel workbooks where we have same sheet names in each of the uh, workbook and same name of the worksheet now again it will come in your mind that what if that in all the excel workbooks the sheet names are not same and different then we want to need to do and that concept will cover in the next video that is pq12 okay all right so i hope you understood and let's uh, demonstrate that in the power bi okay so in the power bi i will click on get data then i will click on more okay now i will select the folder and I will click on connect so I need to define the path either you can copy that or you can click on browse to locate that folder and I will just click on OK button now alright so it shows me some metadata again a summarized kind of a data and what we need to do is we need to combine all these Excel files and load it into the Power BI. So I will select combine and load. Now it will read on the back end, it will evaluate the query and will take some seconds to uh, fetch the data from different Excel workbooks where we have all the sheet names are same. And uh, within few seconds it will combine. But before that, we have a last step to perform that we need to select. Um, a file any we, we can select any file because the standard is same the number of columns are similar kind are available in each of the excel workbook so you can select any file but as i told you in the earlier videos that if you have something very different in one particular file so you can make it as a base file okay and we know that each of the file contains a sheet so you can see this is the icon is, is of sheet uh, where each uh, sheet name is data in in each of the excel workbook so the name is similar so we need to click on this sheet name and click on ok so in next few seconds it will try to fetch the data from each of the excel workbook so now the data is being loaded and you can see on the right side of field list you can preview the 
data here in the data tab and uh, what if that a new file is in place in the folder so what we what you can do is for example there are four excel workbooks and for example next week or a next month a new file is being uh, paste here by the user so for example if I make a copy of this like, particular Excel workbook and if I rename that as a central okay so when I go to the Power BI you can see that currently we, we have just uh, uh, data coming from four Excel files central is not presented here but we have placed that file in the folder so I will go to the home tab and click on refresh and now you can see that the data from the central excel workbook has also been added right so i hope you understand that how we can append the data from different excel workbooks where we have the assumption that all the sheet names are same in the next video we will learn that what if when the user have multiple excel workbooks in a folder and it does not have a consistency because the table names are different in each of the Excel workbook and the sheet names are also different in each of the Excel workbook. Then we will define the M language code and we will cover that in the next video that is PQ12. Thank you. Hi, this is Zaheem Zulfikar Ali from Excel Basement. In this video, we will learn how we can append data when we have uh, different sheet names and different table names so what exactly we will be doing here is we will be getting data from multiple excel workbooks in a in a specific folder and we will combine all the data in different excel workbooks together and this technique is called appending where we don't have a, a similar or a different kind of pattern available like we did in previous videos of PQ11 there we have uh, either same sheet names or same table names here what the user is doing is that he has a folder and in that particular folder uh, there are four Excel workbooks now if I open all these Excel workbooks in Excel so I can uh, show you that uh, each of the workbook has a sheet name for example in the north file the sheet name is not data and the table name is not when I open another Excel workbook for the East here the name of the sheet is East data and table name is East so primarily there is no uh, a kind of a pattern we can see uh, related to same sheet names or same table names so all the table names are different all the sheet names are different and we need to append the data from multiple Excel workbooks right so how we can treat that this kind of a situation in Microsoft Power BI so let's get start so in Power BI I will click on get data then I will click on more okay so here we will select folder and click on connect so define the file path and then click on OK. So it will show you some metadata again, a summarized kind of a data that this folder contains four Excel workbooks, East, North, South, West. And uh, now if I go to combine and if I select the second option, combine and load, what it will does is it will run the process, but at the end of some time, it will show me an error because all these four excel workbooks contains sheets but they have different names and all these workbooks contains data or table that has also different names so if i go with the second option combine and load it will not work here so we will select uh, the transform data first not also the combine and transform data and not the combine and load we will click on transform data so it will open up a power query editor window where we can see exactly the same metadata right here okay so here we need to do some uh, steps to fetch the data from all those excel workbooks okay so we just need two columns content and the name and we don't need other columns to be present here so 
I will select all other columns and I will just right click and then I will select remove columns so now I only have two columns that is content and the second is name now the next step is I need to add one custom column so to add that on top you can see add column ribbon where you will find custom column option here okay so you have to click here and it will open up a window so first define the name let's say we call it as data you can write any name if you would like to for your understanding now you have to write an M language code because Power Query understand the M language mashup language okay M stands for mashup so it's a very powerful uh, language for data transformation um, because we say that Power Query is an ETL tool but at the same time remember that Power Query is a case sensitive language so whatever the codes you will write here you need to write in a case sensitive proper format so we start with an equal sign I will write Excel dot workbook okay so you can see that IntelliSense is showing me there are two uh, M language codes available excel dot workbook and excel dot current workbook so we we want to fetch from different workbooks so we will use this code excel dot workbook right and you can observe one more thing is that uh, I have write excel e capital and workbook w capital if you write entire code in a small alphabets even if you are if you follow the pattern same if, if the syntax is basically correct but when you press ok it will not run because Power Query is a case sensitive kind of a language so you need to write in a similar pattern E will be capital here W will be capital here okay so you have to consider that okay so now once writing the code uh, and this is a kind of an understanding which you can compare when whenever you use Microsoft Excel for example you you use some function you use VLOOKUP function or IF function so in Excel either you write in a small letters uh, the spelling of function the in in the small letters or capital letters it doesn't matter but here in the Microsoft Power BI when you use Power Query you have to write M language code in a case sensitive patterns okay all right so now we need to fetch the content from all those Excel workbooks so we will use this parameter or you can say that this available column here that is content so I just double click and it will auto write here and I will close the round bracket now as you can see that on the bottom there is a green check which means that there is no syntax error has been detected this means that my this line of code is being correctly written but if anything which I miss it will show you uh, the guidance that uh, you have not written something correctly but if you are writing the code correctly uh, it's it's being checked uh, as, as in green symbol right and, and now press OK so you got a new column which is a custom column that is data and there is table written in this entire column right now you will see that there is a drop down uh, menu kind of uh, icon so you have to open this and you just need to uncheck this field which is called use original column name as prefix we will just uncheck this and we need all this columns uh, information so I will press OK okay so now all those uh, fields has been fetched and now we need to select the tables because all those four Excel workbooks uh, which are presented in this folder contains tables inside them okay so if I go to Power Query again so in the kind column you can see there is a column called kind in the kind column open the drop down and just select table because we need to fetch uh, the data from the table now for example if in in your case if there is a situation where you don't have tables inside your excel workbooks so you might have sheets uh, definitely so you will select sheet in that particular case but we have a choice either selecting the table or sheet so i will go with the table right and now what I need to do is now you can see there is one more column which is data dot one it has been renamed now when I open this this particular drop down menu again so it it shows me all those column names which were presented in the Excel workbook remember that 
store id q1 q2 q3 q4 i will press ok so now this from this particular technique we fetch all the data from different excel workbooks the columns which are not uh, necessary to be presented here we, we don't need them you can just delete them like we don't need these three columns so i will select them and remove columns because i got my desired data from here right you can rename the headers just double click and rename the header for example if i rename that as source file once uh, and you can also see that if i open this drop down menu you can see that the data is being coming from four different files that is east north south and west right so this is a kind of a technique you have wrote one m language code that is called excel dot workbook and at any time if you want to see what is going on a back end so on the home tab you can just click on advanced editor where all the steps has been recorded and this is basically called an m language where uh, the user basically uses the front end and but on the back end th this particular tool generates the m language mashup language okay and each of this step is being recorded and also you can undo any step by clicking the cross sign here in the applied step section as well but our purpose has been fulfilled because we have fetch all the data from different excel workbooks where we have uh, the there was a limitation that each of the sheet name was different and table name was different so it's easy like super cool just one line of code and your problem has been solved so now you can compare with this kind of a functionalities with excel as well so once you are done you can just click on close and apply and your data will be loaded in the power bi window and then you can start making your dashboards thank you Hi, this is Raheem Zulfikar Ali from Excel Basement. In this video, we will learn about the replace and fill down technique can be done in Power Query. So let's start. So I will go to get data from Excel workbook. And then I will go to the folder for my file is PQ13, replace and fill. And I will open this Excel workbook. So it will take few seconds to read all right so we have a choice either we can select table or sheet so i will go with the table so here is the preview and we will go directly to the power query editor so we will click on transform data button okay so here is the power query editor now you can see here in the products column we have the first product that is soft drinks and then we have null everywhere right then we have bottles and then we have null everywhere and uh, how we can fill this downwards each of the product where each of the product has a new name we want to fill this same name okay uh, i hope that you have might done previously this kind of a technique in microsoft excel uh, today you will learn that how you can do fill down technique in power query then we will replace uh, one word that is of salesperson Rafiq, and instead of Rafiq, we want to replace into Raheem. Okay, so let's get start. If I select the product column first for fill down, so you will get this option in the transform tab. Okay, and here is the icon called fill. So you have two kind of choices: either you want to fill down pattern or you want to fill up. So when I click on fill down, you can see that very easily uh, the null cell has been filled with the product name very successfully, right? Now we will see how to replace a certain word from a column, okay? So I have selected the salesperson column and uh, here I will use replace values, okay? And uh, it will open up a small window. So the value to find is Rafiq and we want to replace it with Raheem okay and click on ok so it has been replaced so whatever we are doing in power query on the back end by using some buttons or features on the ribbon definitely as you know that uh, on the back end and mashup language has been created so you can see in the advanced editor uh, this particular code or you can see in the applied steps each of the step has been recorded here right so it's very easy uh, to 
do the fill downwards or upwards in power query or replace any kind of a word in the power query once you are done you can just click on close and apply and you are ready to use them in your dashboards thank you hi this is Raheem Zulfikar Ali from Excel Basement in this video we will learn about how to format numbers and how to correct the date formats uh, in Microsoft Power Query so let's get start I have opened a data in Excel application uh, first let's understand how it looks like so for example if I uh, extract some data from a software and see in Microsoft Excel so we have three columns here in this data set date customer and total and the format of the date is basically a number it's not looking like a date so we need to correct that and as well as uh, you know that the numbers should be on the right side of a cell uh, the numbers which are on the left side are not basically as a property of a number it's it's a text value so to cross check this in Excel we can use a function that is called is number so if this is a number it will generate a boolean value uh, so a boolean value true indicates that it's actually a number but it's not a number it's basically a text value okay and uh, if I try to sum a few numbers with the example of sum function for example so it's not returning the value it's returning the zero this means that the type of these numbers is not correct okay so this kind of issue occurs from some of the software's extraction of the data and we need to correct them in uh, power query either you use in excel or power bi so there are two issues the correction of the date format and the correction of the numbers as well okay so let's import this data in power bi and let's get started how we can correct that so in power bi i will click on get data from excel workbook and this is pq14 formatting numbers and dates okay so we have the table here so we will select this table and uh, click on transform data which will get into the power query editor all right so first we need to see that which two which columns we need to correct now here you can see that uh, the numbers are coming on the right side so automatically power query has detected and changed the type of this total column okay and you can just click on the uh, small icon of the left side of the header where you can uh, select the property of that particular you want to set so we'll select either you want to have a decimal number or as a whole number so if i click on whole number it will uh, i will click on add new step and it will convert in that as a new whole number so you can change the formatting uh, format types as well okay from here for the date uh, what is required is because it coming as a number and we will click on this small icon on the left side of the header and we will select instead of one two three which is whole number we want to select the date here okay so it's coming now uh, as a proper format of slash formatted dates okay so once this has been corrected click on close and apply and now you are ready to use these fields in your power bi dashboard one more thing you might think about it that what happens if the data gets append and it's coming wrong from the data source so remember that whatever the steps you applied in power query and if the data gets appending or increasing with the passage of time uh, you just need to click on refresh and uh, the data will transform automatically so that's the beauty of power query because all those steps which you perform in power query is being recorded just like a concept of macro you do in excel so in power query once you do the data transformation and data cleanup uh, all has been recorded and when the data gets increasing with the passage of time you don't have to worry about and you don't have to repeat the steps just click on refresh and your data will be ready to use in the dashboard thank you hi this is Raheem Zulfikar Ali from excel basement 
In this video, we will learn that how we can add calculated fields by adding a custom column in Microsoft Power Query. So let's first load the data and then add the custom columns and calculated field in it. So I will click on get data, Excel workbook and uh, this lesson is PQ15 adding custom calculated columns. So it will open up an Excel file will take some few seconds to read all right so we will select the data so there is a table called actual and we will click on transform data so now we are into the power query editor so there are five columns in the data set month category product actual sales and budgeted sales and we are required to add one column which is based on calculation actual minus budget uh, which is the variance column and then we will also add another column variance as in percentage so how we can perform this in power query so we will click on add column tab and here we will click on custom column so first we will define a name as variance and here after equal to sign we will say actual sales so we have just double click on this particular field it will be written automatically so actual sales minus budgeted sales so our equation is absolutely correct and you can see that there is a message no syntax errors has been detected so we will press ok and now there is a variance column right and we say that convert as in whole number right all right next we want variance as in percentage okay so how we can perform that so we will click on custom column and we say variance as variance as in percentage so we will place round bracket so actual sales minus budgeted sales divided by budgeted sales and press ok so we'll convert this column as in percentage so I will click on percentage and now it's converted into a percentage so this is how uh, we can add custom column based on some calculations we can define in power query as well thank you hi this is Raheem Zulfikar Ali from Excel Basement in this video we will learn two awesome techniques regarding power query the first one what is the purpose of group by technique and how you can use group by and then we will merge two different tables of data actual versus budget and we will look up for the budgeted values in the actual table so let's get start uh, I have opened that file in Excel first to show you the how the data looks like and to give you a concept and then we will apply that into the power bi so in this particular excel workbook we have two sheets actual and budget in the actual sheet we have uh, some records and there are four columns month category product and actual sales and in the budget sheet we have again four columns month category product and budgeted sales so the first thing is you observe is that there are three transactions coming three times okay and what we are required to do is for example if I change this amount for the meantime okay so there are three transactions uh, the first three transactions related to the first of January 2015 uh, for the category beverages and the product is chai and that coming three times right through with three different actual sales numbers so what we are required to do is we want to group these three similar transactions into one record so the these are three records we want to make it just in uh, a one record and these three numbers will club or sum all together similarly one more example if you can see uh, the record number the fourth record and the fifth record which is related to the beverages of black tea and it's coming two times for example if I change the amount here 
So what I need to do is this is basically a repetitive uh, record and I want to group into one. Okay. So these two amounts will be merged as one amount and we don't have two records. We will have one record. So in these kind of scenarios, you use the group by technique. Okay. Similarly, in the budget sheet, you will see uh, two transactions or three transactions. So you want to group by them. And also after grouping, we want that we want to fetch all the budgeted numbers with respect to their respective products and beverages and the month dates to come in the actual table so that we can compare actual versus budgeted sales. Okay. So this technique will be done by the merging in Power BI. So let me save this file in Excel, but we will be doing the demonstration for surely in Power BI. So let me close this to the Power BI. So what we will do is we'll click on get data from Excel workbook. And this topic is PQ 16 group by and we will select this Excel workbook. So it will take few seconds to read on the back end. Okay, so now you can see that uh, we have two sheets in this particular workbook actual and budget, but we want to get the data from the respective table. So that is actual one and budget two table these two tables we will select and we will go all right so now we have the data in the power query editor right so first we will do the technique for group by technique to make the similar entire similar records into one so in the transform tab on the left side you you can see group by okay so just click on group by Okay, so a dialog window will be open of group by and you need to select advance here and then uh, we need to group uh, by three columns month category and product. So month is already there by default. We need to add two more groupings for uh, the category and also for the product. So we have selected three columns based in a group by uh, the new column name will be let's say actual sales what kind of operation we are required to do for similar kind of record we want uh, that the actual sales should sum here you can also uh, do the average median min max or any other thing but here we will select for this particular scenario sum and which column from uh, the numbers are there we know that the actual sales is the column uh, in which the operation sum will be applied and a new column actual sales will be created uh, with the group by technique. So I will press OK. And now you can see that now the the three records are not coming. Uh, instead, there is just one record of beverages chai and the amount has been totaled. Right. Similarly, for the black tea, you can see that those two amounts has been summed. Right. So this is how you you use the group by technique for duplicate records and clubbing them into one uh, and you can define the operation similarly for the budget table i just click on budget table and click on group by technique from the transform tab click on advanced because we have more than one column for the grouping so we will select month category and product the new column name will be budget sales the operation we want to perform is sum and that column which contain the number is budget sales and press OK. Right now these two tables has been successfully grouped by now we want to create one more new table in which we will uh, basically uh, fetch actual and budgeted columns side by side. Okay. So for doing that we will go to home tab and here uh, we will click on small arrow merge queries and we will click on merge queries as new. Okay, so first uh, on top uh, this this side is called left side and down the line this si side is called right side. Okay, so in this particular course other videos you will find the concepts of joins. There are six different types of joins you can perform to fetch uh, the records between the two tables depending on what kind of a join kind you are applying. Uh, for here we will select first actual table 
then at the bottom you'll select budget table uh, because uh, the primary thing is that these three columns are the base columns so i have selected month category and product and you can see that a small number has been uh, generated on top right side of each of the header right so one two three one two three defines that the sequence in which i have selected these column and similarly i have to select the same sequence for the budgeted table why i am selecting these three columns because these three columns will look up from the actual table to the budgeted table and fetch the required column which we are which we want based on the join kind so we want left outer join uh, which means that all from the first this is the first table so all the records from the first table will match themselves from the second table and if that match so our required column outputs will come on the first table okay and at the bottom you can read the sentence it says that the selection matches 857 records of 858 draws from the first table okay uh, why not 858 out of 858 because that's definitely possible that uh, might be the we don't have that budget of particular product and it came into the actual table or uh, it didn't came into the actual but it, it's available in the budget so there is one record which is not available in one, e in in a single table that's why uh, it's not 858 out of 858 it's 857 okay so when i press okay so a new table will be formed so here you can see that uh, a new table on the left side which is called merge one you can just right click and rename if you want to uh, definitely when you create dashboard so it will help you to re uh, remember the name so you can rename that as well according to your feasibility uh, now you can see that there are five columns here month category product actual sales now we want to uh, here take the amount of the budgeted sales uh, figures right so click on this drop down menu and we just need to check mark the budgeted sales okay and uncheck everything else just budgeted sales and press ok so now you can see that uh, it's it's just a kind of uh, a conceptual side when you do something in microsoft excel called v lookup or index match you fetch the uh, values from different area based on lookup value if you use v lookup or index match in microsoft excel similarly the concept of merge based on a join kind does the same thing when you when you merge two tables uh, you basically define the join kind either is left join or right join or or any other join based on your condition and you and you fetch that desired column from the other table so primarily primarily what we have done so far is that we have group by uh, technique has been applied because there were similar kind of records were there and we also fetch the budgeted sales in front of actual cell so that we can compare for each of the record right okay so these are the steps once you are done you can just click on close and apply and that will go into your power bi uh, area and then you can start making your dashboard thank you hi this is raheem zulfikar ali from excel basement in this video we will learn about that how we can convert a non-tabular data into a tabular data now if you can see uh, the demo of this data that we have uh, almost 13 columns in, in our, this particular data set uh, this is basically converted in table and i have opened this in microsoft excel so we have uh, from product 1 to product 10 information and uh, the numbers are basically units sold in each of the month according to the product now this particular data is being called non-tabular data and we want to convert this non-tabular data into a tabular format so that we can uh, bring that tabular data into our uh, power bi for making some dashboards because non-tabular data is not recommended so what is mean by tabular and non-tabular see non-tabular data are generally summarized data a, a kind of a semi-report or a report but a tabular data 
has every record in each of the raw. So for example, if I want to convert this particular non-tabular data into a tabular data, so it will look like this. So basically there are 12 records for product one in each of the month. And if I convert them into a tabular format, so it will look like this. There are 12 records or transactions for the product one in each of the month and according to the unit sold numbers. Then we proceed to product two. Again, product two has uh, 12 transactions for each of the month according to the unit sold. So generally, Microsoft Power BI wants the tabular data to be added in to make some dashboard features. If we have non-tabular data, just like a kind of a semi-report or a report, the Power Query comes very handy to convert the non-tabular data into a tabular data. Look like this, okay? So we have a feature called unpivot columns in Power Query and we can convert this particular non-tabular data into a tabular format very easily and within few seconds. So let's get to demonstrate that how we can use unpivot column feature in Power BI with specific to the Power Query editor. So let me close this window and then we proceed to Power BI. All right, so in Power BI, I will click on get data. Uh, the data source will be from the Excel workbook. And this is topic PQ17 unpivot. So we will open the file. It will take few seconds to read. Okay, so now we will select this table, which is called data, which contains a non-tabular format. And we will click on transform data to use the feature of unpivot columns. Okay, so now this is the data and we want to unpivot. So we will select from January till December columns. Okay, so I will press shift key and then I will click on December. So all the columns will be selected. And now I will go to transform tab. And here you can see we have the feature that is called unpivot columns. So as soon as I click, you can see that that non tabular data has been converted to a transactional or rec record and it converted into a tabular format, right? Uh, as we saw in Excel, just like for the demo. So there are pro there are 12 transactions for product one in each of the month and then product two, product three, product four. Now this is a kind of a data set which you can use in a tabular format to create your dashboards. So it's very easy. Within few seconds, you have converted that. Imagine if you are doing this activity in Excel as a traditional user, you might came across again with some codings or, or very, very complex formulas, but in Power BI, Power Query lets you to have unpivot column features to make uh, your data tabular and ready for use in the dashboard. Uh, the last step is to rename the columns, which you can just double click on the header and type the name which you like. Instead of values, you will write units sold. Right. So once you have done all the steps, you can just go to home tab, click close and apply. And then data will load into the Power BI window and then you'll start making your dashboard. So I hope you have cleared the concept of unpivot columns. Thank you. Today's uh, session, today's webinar, we will be discussing about, uh, first we will discuss about types of joins which are available in Power Query or Power BI. And we have six different uh, kinds of uh, joins available. As you can see on my screen, you, you can see a list here. So you have the left outer, uh, and the left outer says all from first matching from second. Then we have a right outer join, then we have full outer, inner join, left anti join, and right anti join. What, what was happening is uh, previously, when, when we don't have uh, Excel Power Query, most of the IT guys used to uh, get data from, uh, from the SQL and they used to write a language, structured query language, SQL. And uh, those IT guys, what, what they do is they write some coding. As you can see, if I need to join, if I need to apply a join, which is called left join from two tables, right? From two of the tables, if I need to apply the join, I need to write this code. So writing a code is, is not easy at, at the beginning. You need to learn the programming language SQL, right? And after learning the programming language, you will be able to connect the data source and you need to fetch the data and apply the joins by, by different programming syntaxes. 
so for the business user it was very difficult to learn the programming language from the very start and then um, apply the, the merge on, on the data and similarly if you need to apply the right join in in sql again you need to write some specific lines of coding and then uh, if the coding is correct uh, you will get the right join of your database so the the problem was that the business user was not able to quickly understand understand the languages and for that purpose what happens is in future is still is still the sql is very famous language to get the data from from the servers from different type of servers and uh, to apply the merge and joins as well but what happens is we have an excel power query or the power bi we can just simply click on buttons select the join type and the system automatic automatically gives us uh, the required result without applying the codes without doing the programming so that was the uh, advantage and that is currently the advantage if you want to apply the join in power query you can simply uh, see that we have a list of uh, different join types available for the business user you need to understand that which type of join will be very useful for for your data for, for which kind of data you are required and you will apply the joins and in this today's webinar i will be explaining each and every of the joins and their outputs so that fundamentally you can understand uh, how they react and how the response as an outcome and we we are not required a uh, sql uh, for, for the joins with between the two tables okay so that's the advantage here now let's come to the example we have a very first example where we have two tables the first table is on left side which reflects of sales of products and we have four different columns in it the first column is product id the second column is product name uh, then we have some dates and the respective amounts and this table is is known as uh, for example as a fact table and primarily might be some of you don't know what is fact table but later on in this webinar you will be exploring that what are fact tables in the dimension table as well uh, on the right side i have one more table which contains some information uh, for example we have product id again we have product names and in this table we have an additional new column which is called stock location so stock location is not available in in the left uh, table whereas it is available in the right table as well but what we need is we need to locate as we have as we can see there are three sales uh, which which are matching with with, uh, with between the two tables uh, one is related to the canor and the second one is related to the blue band and we need to look up we need to fetch and merge uh, that data with together and we need to get the stock location from the other table as well now it's all depend on the situation that what kind of a join you will apply and how they react so we will be going through one by one with with an example okay so for applying the uh, joins in in uh, excel power query you need to have uh, you need to go to data tab first and you need to click on get data and then you will go to the uh, merge options okay and i will tell you that there are a lot of ways you will find later on google or youtube videos but in this webinar i will tell you about one of the easiest way to get uh, merge the data uh, between two tables and apply the join as well so if you are using excel previous versions or the older versions like excel 2010 and 2013 you will get a separate tape for the power query but if you are using the latest version you need to go to data tab and from there you can get the get and transform group and you can apply the power query joins okay uh, so this is the demonstration uh, that how you you have the excel data and you go to when you go to the merge options you will see in this is screen you have two tables table one on the top side uh, whatever table you will select here this is called the left side table okay so table one is on top selected as uh, this is called as a left table table two is the second table this is called as a right table and between these two tables uh, first i am applying the left outer join and left outer join says that all transactions from the first table would come and also the matching from the second as well so the criteria matching from the 
second table will also be uh, added as an output okay so let's say if this is the data if you have understood this example so the first join we will be applying in this today's uh, situation is the left outer join so for example if we have two tables the first table consists of four columns and the second table consists of three columns and between these two if we want to apply the left outer join so you can see that i have highlighted few of the rows that will definitely uh, matching with each other right and by applying the left outer join see what happens if if these two tables joins or merge between uh, together and if i select a type which is for left outer join so the output will come like this so all the transactions from the left table all the transactions from left table has been my output plus uh, from the right table we have the matching transactions with each other so this is the output of left outer join okay. let's go to the next example again if we have again these two tables and uh, we want to apply the right outer join this time okay uh, before that we applied the left outer join but now we want to apply the right outer join so what happens is so the all the transactions from the right side is available with us and all those matching transactions from the left table is available with us so this is how you decide that which kind of a join is available and suitable for your uh, further analysis purpose and then you select the uh, right type of join in power query or the power bi both uh, joins has a different outcome those transactions who are matching with each table definitely that will come as an output but if you have selected the right outer join all the transition of the right table will also come as well next type of join which we have available in power Query and power bi is that full outer join now what is meaning by the full outer join again we have the same example and uh, this time we have two tables right and between these two tables uh, let's say if we need to apply the uh, full outer join so all transactions will come together all the data will be merged with together okay so let's say if i apply the full outer join so all the transactions from the left table is also came uh, all the transaction from right also came but those transactions who are intersecting with each other who are matching with each other are also on the same row so the transactions from the left or right table match from each other is is on the same row whereas all transactions has been came from table one left table and table two right table as well next kind of uh, join which we have available is the inner join so sometimes we need a less data we, we don't need for all the data uh, to be as an output we need uh, those data which is which is matching only so again with the same data with with the different two tables if we apply inner join on this kind of a situation we will get the result as like this so only those transactions who has match between table one and table two has been our output okay so in few of the situations you just need to have uh, all those transactions who are matching with, with between two tables okay second last uh, join we have is called the left anti join so left anti joins means that for example again we have two tables and we apply the left anti join on this so the output will remains all the transaction which are not matching with each other will be left and the remaining transactions will be as an output because it the word anti reflects that uh, uh, the transaction which are not matching between the two tables the remaining transactions which are not matching from the left table has been our output okay and similarly if you understand the left anti join we have also right anti join so what right anti join will uh, gives us an output from the right table the transaction which are not matching with the left table will be as an output 
So if we if we can see the right anti-join output, uh, you can see here that all the transactions from the right table, which are not matching from the left table, has been our output. So we have so far discussed in this webinar six different types of uh, joins, uh, and uh, it depends all on the situation that how you want your output to be uh, for for the further analysis. Okay, so we have two tables and uh, i will go to the data tab and my this first table is is not a normal range it's already converted into the table format and i will go to uh, get and transform group and here i can find an option which is called from table or range so what i am doing is i will be pushing this data into the power query and i will make a connection of it so that this data should connect with within the power query domain okay so what i will do is i will click on this from table or range button and uh, this will open a new window for me and this is the power query window uh, and in the previous webinars many of the tr uh, trainers has explained to you about the power query so this is the interface of uh, power query and uh, here what we need to do is we need to uh, create a connection first so for creating a connection, uh, what we will do is because we don't know, don't need any kind of a transfer transformation. If we need to do any kind of a transformation or changes with the database, so you can do that. For example, uh, if if I don't need a time here, I just need a date. I can simply click on date and uh, replace current. So my date is correct. So for example if you need some tra transformation you can do it otherwise you can skip because we just need to create a connection first so i will quickly go to close and load menu and here i will not select close and load because if i click on close and load the exact data will be pasted on the excel interface what i need to do is i need to create a connection and for creating a connection i will click on close and load to button and uh, here import data window will appear and i will just click on only create connection because i just need to create a connection of this table into the power query so i selected only create connection option and i will press ok here so as i soon as i press ok you can see that table one connection only has been shown in the right side of my this panel and you can also preview the data as well so now for the second table uh, I will also create a connection for the second table and again I will go to uh, the data tab and I will click on from table or range and here the power query window will appear we have a preview of our data right? and uh, for creating a connection I will just click on close and load to again and I will select only create connection option and I will press ok so now we have a two tables table one and table two and both are successfully uh, made as a connection now our duty is to apply a different kind of a joints and give you a demonstration that how different kind of joints behaves as an output okay so for example uh, let's to merge the data or to and, and to apply the joints okay what we need to do is we will go to the get data option and from this menu we will go to combine queries and here you can see two different options the first one is the merge and the second one is append so merge and append both are two different things uh, we will uh, be applying merge in these first examples uh, for the appending we will come later on this webinar so we will go to the merge option and uh, a window will appear in front of you where we need to select the different tables so we have two tables so on on the first we will select the table one which gives us a preview of the, all those four columns and um, at, at the bottom we will be selecting table two so for instance uh, as i told you earlier in the webinar whatever table you are selecting at the first will be known as the left table and at the bottom whichever table you select this is called the right table okay and then you have uh, a choice uh, between a different kind of uh, to apply the join kinds and uh, as i told you earlier in the webinar in, in much detail as a fundamental that 
each kind of a join gives you a different kind of an output so uh, starting with the most primarily and most common kind of a join which is called the left outer join uh, which do all from the first matching from the second right so i will click on this and also i need to identify the primary key for for matching between these two tables so as i know that the product id is the most commonly available between these two tables so i will just click on on the product id column in table one and table two and as you can see at the bottom the selection matches three of eight rows from the first table and as soon as i press ok there will be an output in in the power query interface so now here in this interface you can see that the first four columns represent the left table in which we have the product id product name date and amount and from the second table if you open this drop down menu in the second table we have the product id product name and stock location as well right so if you need some specific column you can just check mark that if you don't need any column you can uncheck that as well uh, for the aggregate side if you want to do some calculation you will go to the aggregate side but for in in our current scenario we don't need to perform any aggregation we just need to expand the data from the right table and also we need to uncheck the uh, option which is called use original column name as prefix because this is not relevant here so i will press ok and all the transactions from the table to table two which is the right table which were matching from the table one has been ex, uh, expanded and after that i need to click on close and load button to get my output finally on the excel interface so now the power query will bring the all the data by applying the left join on my excel interface so this is how you apply the left join between two tables uh, as, as a left join okay next we can demonstrate about the right join again we will go to data tab get data combine queries and we'll we will be clicking on merge so first we will select the table one then we have select the table two and now you can see there is a there is a difference uh, previously it was showing the menu the drop down list was showing table one and table two but now here it's also showing merge one so if, if later on if you need to apply uh, the merging or joins between the new tables as well you can do that but for now in this example uh, we will be applying merging joins between table one and table two and in this example now we are applying the right outer join so if if the it guy is doing this kind of a job he he would be writing an sql and for the sql you need to write some lines of coding so now this is the advantage for the business user that he don't need to write any kind of a coding he just need to select the right kind of a join from the list and then he can get the output as well very easily so this is the self-service business intelligence from the microsoft that the business user don't need to deep drive into the coding uh, whole day as he just need to understand the right purpose and the concepts of the joins and the other application features so that he can do his work without any dependency on the it as well so now in this situation uh, we have applied the right outer join and when i press ok again the interface um, goes into the power query window and then from here we will be expanding the uh, table two and when the data is expanded now if we want to do any transformation we can do transformation we have a lot of features available or we can simply click on close and load and now the data has been uh, joined and you can see the output of a right join okay so all the transaction in the right table plus the matching from the left table is now being merged together right now full outer join so how we can do the full outer join again we will go to data get data combine queries uh, merge but before doing the uh, full outer join for example um, if i write turnover in capital letters okay and uh, here we have a small uh, case sensitive issue for example we can also check 
if we have a data the rows are matching but they are uh, case sensitive on the left table uh, the spelling is in capital letters but on the right side it's not in the, all the capital letters so we will be applying the outer join and we will be uh, having an output that the case sensitive is is the issue here or not so let's uh, go to get data combine queries and we will click on merge and from now here we will select table one and then table two and we will select the join kind which is called the full outer and full outer means all rows from the both tables okay and we will select the primary column which is product id which is available in both call uh, tables and we will press ok so now the interface will uh, takes me to the power query window and here we need to expand the data and then close and load so now um, i will expand the table two okay and uh, i will press close and load button So now, as you can see that the Kanoor spelling is in capital letters, product ID, but here is in uh, is in a small letters. So this also matches with each other. Even eventually, if uh, we have a different spellings, for example, uh, here you can see the product name is written in 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 the proper format. If I write uh, here the column name in capital letters, still the join will work. The case sensitive issue uh, in the Power Query comes between the titles when it uh, when we apply the logic of appending the data. So when we do the appending, we need the case sensitive. We need to take care of case sensitive headings headers of the tables. But when we are joining two different kind of a tables, uh, the case sensitive is not much a matter of issue as I have demonstrated you. Okay. So the fourth one uh, join fourth kind of a join uh, which is called the anti join. Let's perform that. So I will go to get data. I will click on combine queries. I mean, I will click on merge. First, I will select the table one here. Then again, table two identifying the common column one more thing is that uh, you will find later on, on my youtube channel as well i have recorded some of the videos as well that for when you joining two tables you uh, this is not a rule that you primarily go with the one table uh, common table common column you can select more than two columns as well as a sequence and on the back end this this is working as a concatenate so this is generating a new key at the back end and uh, these two columns for example product id and the product name has been uh, uh, joined together as a concatenate uh, concept and then it will search out for the transaction which are matching with each table as well so either you can go uh, by selecting a different kind of a single uh, selection or the multiple uh, column selection between the tables but now for for our, in this current example we are going with a common column and a single column matching which is called the product id and now we will be applying the inner join so inner join only gives an output whose rows are matching with each other okay so let's press ok and the interface of power query will come and here we need to expand the table two so i will expand the table two here and simply i will click on close and load so my all the data will fetch in the excel spreadsheet as an output from the power query and you can see that in the uh, nt join you will only get the output which all those rows which are matching from left table and the right table right go to combine queries we will click on merge we have left nt join and the right nt join and we will be applying it quickly and we will be proceeding to the next topic of the webinar so i will select the table one here and then table two here identify the common key and then i will select left nt join and i'll press ok so now the power query window will appear with the data and as you can see that there is a formula bar here in the power query which consists of m language code 
uh, M language, and if you want to go to advanced editor, you can explore the M language as well. So M language is not much difficult. It, it just need a lot of practice, and with the time and experience, you will get that hands on to it. But this is very uh, important language to learn these days. So now I will expand the columns from the table two, and uh, I will click on close and load. So all the transactions which were not matching from the table two will come in the left NT join, and as you can see as an output, that all the transactions from table one which were not matching. Uh, gives me as an output, right? And the last kind of a join, which is the sixth kind of a join, which I am telling you, explaining you in the webinar, is the right anti join. So again, I go to merge option and I will select two tables table one, table two. Always remember that you need to give a proper, nice names to your merging uh, databases, otherwise, it will come like merge one merge two merge three which will you will uh, later on you will confuse that what kind of a table it is always gives a proper name product id will be the common column and in the join kind from this list as now you can observe that i do i don't need to write any kind of a sql here i just need to select the right kind of a join so in this last example i am selecting the right entity join and i will press ok and now the Power Query editor window is uh, visible. And from here, I will expand the table two. And as we can see that all those transactions from the right table, which were not matching from the left is, uh, is my output. So I will press close and load button and it will give me an output in my Excel interface. Right, so, so far so good we have uh, discussed six different kind of a join their purposes and their behaviors as an output in in the excel uh, the same interface uh, the same concept will remain in in the power bi as well in this video we will learn to create a calendar dimension table with power query and dax and we will compare that which is the easiest way to create a calendar dimension table uh, you definitely have a choice either you can go with the power query method or if you are comfortable with dax so you can create in dax so let's get start as a power bi user you know that when you have a data model and you create a star schema so to control the data granularity uh, you have a table that is a one dimension table related to the calendar uh, where you can align that dimension table to a fact table so that you can use time intelligence DAX easily and uh, instead of uh, creating all the uh, calendar table within the fact table you control the data granularity with that so there are two methods primarily I will discuss in this video one with uh, how to create with the power query and uh, what are those steps and then uh, with the DAX so let's get start first I will show you with the power query so for doing that I will go to the home tab and I will click on transform data so it will open a power query editor window here right and this is entirely blank so the first step is to uh, click on this uh, manage parameters drop down menu here you will find a feature that is called new parameter so I will click on new parameter so it will open up a manage parameters window first give a name so let's give a start date and uh, so in the uh, type we will select the date and then in the value so we need to start our calendar first date from 1st of January 2021 and I will press OK so a parameter of the start date has been created uh, again we will go to the same option new parameter and this is the uh, the name of this parameter will be the end date and the type will be date and let's say we want to close this uh, till 31st of December 2021 okay and I will press ok so we have two parameters now start date and the end date now we will right click here and is uh, in this contextual menu just hover your cursor on new query and here click on blank query now we will write uh, m language code here so equals to list 
dot dates so we are using a code that is list dot dates remember that whatever you write in power query it's a case sensitive language so you need to consider that as well so list dot dates we want to create a list of the dates that's why we are using this code bracket open now there are three parameters we need to fill here uh, the first one is start as date so from where we want to start uh, our date list okay so here we will define a parameter which we have already created which is the start date then count as number so we need to uh, define total number of days in which which will be in our calendar so definitely the logic will be the end date will be subtracted from start date and we will add plus one so we will get count as number uh, which defines the total number of days which will be in our this calendar table and then step as duration so we want each day in our list so it, it will be incremental of one okay so these are three parameters which we will fill now so as start as date we will just define start date which we have already created as a parameter then count as number so here we will put another code which is duration dot days bracket open so end date minus start date bracket close plus one okay and then step as duration which is the last uh, parameter or the argument you can say so here we will use a code hashtag duration hashtag duration and then bracket open one comma zero comma zero comma zero and then bracket close now what is this means by one comma zero comma zero comma zero so if you can search this code here so you can see that hashtag duration uh, there are four again fields in this particular code so the first is used for days as number then hours as number then minutes as number and then seconds as number so we want to create a list of uh, dates where each date will be the incremental of one so we need to move one point every time right so that's why we have used one and then zero 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 because we don't want to move uh, as in hours or minutes or seconds we just want to move incremental of one by days only okay so that's why we have used one here all right so let's go back to this so now you have a list here which is starting from the 1st of january 2021 and if i if i scroll down or you can see at the top uh, sorry at the bottom left side there are 365 items this means that you have successfully generated a one year calendar here so if i scroll down so it shows you uh, 31st of December 2021 if I remove this plus one so it will stop by 30th December 2021 so that's why I have used plus one here okay so once you have created this just press the enter key and the next step is to convert this list to a table so you have an option here a button here convert to table so just click on that and uh, select delimiter as none show error as the these options will go by default press ok now you have a column one which contains a list of dates of one year you can change as well if you want to uh, modify the date or change the date you can just go to the start date and type the date you want to start where and end where so this will definitely change automatically okay so once i have this particular dates column i will just rename that that as dates and now what I can do is I can just make a duplicate uh, of this particular column and I can just transform that into different kind of format. So I will just right click on this particular column, duplicate column, and I will create four to five duplicate columns or as per as my choice I want in my calendar table, right? So let's say these are five columns. Okay, so first column will define, uh, I will just right click on this second column uh, right click transform and let's say, let's say we need a name of the month so we have transformed this as a name of the month the second transform is month uh, month number then we want uh, let's say um, year so I will select year as well 
then I want quarters so I will go to quarter and click on quarter now in, in the quarter you can see a list that is one because Jan Feb March consist of the first quarter and then uh, fourth five six right other quarters as well so if you want something like Q1 Q1 Q2 so I will show you that how you're gonna do that let's transform another last column as well uh, D which is uh, this is giving uh, basically the number of the day from the dates right so let me rename all those uh, columns as well so double click month name then we have month number so now you can imagine how much time you want to spend uh, in order to create a calendar dimension table through power query but it's just one time once you have created that you don't need to create again and again you will just uh, create a relationship uh, with this dimension table to your actual fact table of uh, one to one or one to many as you like okay then i will rename this as year then this is the quarter okay and the last one is for the day day numbers okay now for example if you don't want the full spelling of each of the month you just want the first three alphabets so what you can do is right click and uh, split column and by number of characters okay so we will see that once as far as left as possible and we want just three number of characters and I will press ok so this I will just remove the second column and now we have all the month names in uh, three alphabets the same pattern as you can see here right so I will again rename that as month name all right uh, the next one is uh, as you like uh, you don't want to see one two three four in quarter column you want to see q1 q2 q3 so what you can do is uh, first you need to uh, just change the format of this uh, or the data type of this column which is in text okay next step is that you will go to add column create a custom column so just click on custom column and name as qtd and here in the inverted commas place first q which is a character we have placed into the inverted commas and join that with an ampersand sign with a quarter column and press ok so now you have q1 q2 q3 and q4 right and what i will do is i will just remove this column now right so once you have uh, all this all these uh, calendar table is ready what you will do is uh, you can rename this query as well so let's rename this as well as calendar one okay and once you are done with all the transformations just close and apply so now you can see here in the fields area there is a calendar one and we have certain columns here we can preview this as well in the data screen so now you can see here your calendar is ready here it is so this is the one method the another method is to use the DAX so let me show you code first now this is the code let me explain it to you this is very easy uh, the first calendar is basically the name of the table which we will create with the help of uh, some DAX uh, so this is first is the name of the table then equal sign to start the DAX first DAX is the add columns we want to add some multiple columns so we have used this add columns then calendar so the starting date we want in our calendar is from 1st of January 2000 you can change this as well and the end date which we want is the 31st of December 2025 okay then uh, date as integer is the name of the header of the column which we will create and in this particular column we are using the format DAX and this format DAX is basically what it, it is doing is it is uh, picking the date from the date column and convert it in, into a uh, year month and date format a specific format then again there is one more column the next column header will be year in which we are using the year DAX and it will transform the date into a year format then another column which is of month number column which is the header and in this particular column we are using the format DAX which is picking up the date column and we are just extracting the month number from that again so this pattern goes and goes and we are creating each column and within each column we are using uh, some of some of the times we are using the format 
uh, DAX to transform the date into our specified own formats okay so this is the particular code you can save at your easiness I will just select this entire code control C for copy and I will go to the power BI and here in the modeling tab click on new table and a formula bar will appear so just control V for to paste this entire code and just press enter and as soon as you press enter you can see that a calendar table has been created with all the columns mentioned here and we can preview this as well it starts from 2000 till 2025 and we have each of the columns containing different transformation of uh, date column as well here so these are the two methods the first one is from the power query uh, where you can create a calendar dimension table or the second method was to use the DAX uh, which is very much easier. I hope you like this video. Thank you.